The calendar is more than just a calendar for you to look at to keep track of upcoming or previous dates and days, months, or years. You can also keep track and schedule appointments, events, and meetings by hours or by minutes. In any case, to take a look at the calendar, come down below in the navigation pane, and there it is right there, that icon, that when you hover over it, you can do a quick peek. Pops open a little window for you to see, well, there's today's date. It's highlighted in blue, the 26th of March 2016. In any case, let's just go ahead and click on the calendar to get right to it. Of course, up at the top, you got the ribbon, the commands. Then over the left-hand side, you have the navigation pane that where you navigate over here will update over in the main view here. So today's date, and you've got it in day. So for the entire day of that day, March 26th, you can see up there, March 26th, starts at 8 a.m. And you can control that if you want to start earlier than that for your working day, but we'll save that for a later training video. Let's just get the basics here. So first off, let's go over the navigation pane where we can advance from one day to the next. You can click on the 25th, it updates it over in the main view. And for that day, what you have scheduled there, you can also, if you wanna jump around, like go forward, click on the right arrow, go backwards to the previous months, or you can click and hold the left mouse button down on the month and the year, and you can jump up to three months ahead, or three months behind and you can see the update over here on the right hand side in the main view of course you can also use the arrows here to advance day by day or again over in the navigation pane you can go ahead and actually select the date that's viewable for that month now you can see into the future or to the next month like after November 2015 to December by hovering over this line at the bottom and you can see arrows pointing up and down. Go ahead and click and drag that down, and it'll pop open to the next month from the current month that you're viewing. And you can keep doing that. Well, my screen resolution is 1024 by 768, so it's pretty small. The most I can get is two months in the navigation pane for the preview. But if you have larger size resolution, then you could probably get three or four months. In any case, I'm going to go ahead and hover over that line and click and drag it up. Just want to focus on one month at a time in the navigation pane. And by the way, when you're navigating around and you're getting lost, and you're like, okay, what's today's date? And then come up here on the Home tab to the Go To group and click on Today. And it takes you right to it. So when you select another day, even though that's highlighted, you can see it's in a lighter shade of blue. That's your selection as opposed to the actual current date, which is in a darker shade of blue, the 26th. Now, not only do you get today's date, but if you select today's date and you want to know what time it is, I mean, well, you can look down below in the lower right-hand corner, hover over the clock, you get Saturday, March 26, and then, of course, the time, which is 3.32. But notice over here in the main view is 3.32, right? You see that blue line there? That's ticking off down today's timeline, and it's right there at 3.30. And you'll notice over here that it's in half-hour increments. In fact, let's cover this view. And we're looking at the days view, so you can see what I'm talking about. Up here on the home tab in the arrange group, that's by day. You can view by work week, then by week, by month. Let's go ahead and view the day by scrolling all the way to the top. And you can see that the day starts at 12 a.m. And it goes in half hour increments from 12 to 12.30. Well, it doesn't say 12.30, but you got a line that splits it before it hits to 1. And if you can't see it, well, take a look at your computer and you'll be able to see it. In fact, if I click on it, you can see that it selects half of the 12 o'clock time frame. There's the early time frame between 12 and 12.30, the half hour, then the half hour from 12.30 to 1. And then as I scroll down, by clicking and dragging the scroll bar, you can see that it goes all the way down to, there's 11 o'clock, 11.30, and then we hit midnight. Now this is for Saturday. If I select the day before, notice what's different over here for that day is that when I scroll to the top, between 12 and 8 o'clock it's shaded. And then when I go down from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. it's in white and then it shades from 5 to midnight. Why? Because that's the typical working day. And you can change that and I'll show you how to customize that in case if your working day is from 8.30 to 5.30 or you have the midnight shift, you can set that up. Now that doesn't mean that you cannot schedule appointments or meetings on these shaded areas outside of working hours, you can, but it's letting you know that that's not your typical work day. Now, a quick way to navigate within the view here without using your mouse to scroll up and down, go ahead and select anywhere within the working day between 8 and 5, and then hit the home key on the keyboard, and it goes to the first hour of the working day, 8 o'clock. Hit the end key, E-N-D, on the keyboard to go to the end of that day, which is 5 o'clock. 
or if you want to go to technically what's the beginning of the day, 12.01 a.m., hold down the control key and hit home, goes to 12, or control end to go to the end of the day. And then you'll notice to the side you have previous appointment and next appointment. So with upcoming appointments, the next day, the earliest one, you click on it, jumps right to it, or anything you want to view previously. Now in this view, if you want to find out what tasks are due today or coming up, you can come up and click on the View tab. Go to the Layout group, and you can click on Daily Task List, and the default is off. You can go ahead and go to Normal. Pops open a task list for that day, so tasks that are coming up, you can coordinate that with your appointments up above. And we'll cover tasks in a later training video, but this is where you can look at to see the combination between your appointments and your schedule with upcoming tasks. And then to go ahead and get rid of that, you can minimize it, click on it to go down, it's collapsed, and then to restore it, you can expand it. And notice before you expand it, it tells you how many tasks there are, what are active, and what are completed for that day. Because when you go to the next day, you'll have other tasks that will come due and that are active, or maybe zero. In any case, if you want to turn that off, come up here, click on the View tab, go to Layout, Daily Task, and you can go off. Now that's the day view. Let's come up here on the view tab to the arrangement group and see what the work week looks like. And the work week is the typical work week for most people, Monday through Friday. And it doesn't show Sunday or Saturday because, again, you don't work on those days according to the default here. But we can customize this, and I can show you how to do that in a later training video. And then you'll notice for your work week, you still have your working hours, the default 8 to 5, because when you scroll up, Anything that's earlier than 8 a.m. is shaded, and then anything after 5 p.m. is also shaded. You can still schedule within those times, but that's just letting you know that's not typically when you work. And then with the work week, you'll be able to see appointments for this day, for upcoming days ahead, and you can see over here in the navigation pane, the entire week selected, of course, of that week, the day that we can't see, is today's date, March 26th. And then if you need to look for an appointment within this view, either the work week, the day, the week, the month, you get the instant search box, which is next to, hey, what's new to Outlook 2013? It's the weather. So if you're in Washington, D.C. today, it's a balmy 62. And if you want to change that to customize it, click on the drop-down arrow and add a location. Let's add 84121. Hit enter. It says select one of these cities. Italy. That sounds nice. Let's see what it's like in Italy. Okay, 55, not too bad. And then you can see when I hover over the temperature, it expands it, gives me more information. Of course, if I don't like that, click on the drop-down arrow, and you can hover over it, and you get the little X if you want to click on it to remove it. Then it goes back to the default Washington, D.C. You can do the instant search. Click in the instant search box and type for the name of your appointment. If it's appointment on ghost investigations, then type in the keyword ghost, and then it'll find that appointment here search throughout the work week and then when you're done you can come up here and click on close search and then after that we have our regular week come up here in the range group select week and that includes sunday and saturday and you can see that saturday's highlighted but it's faded and the reason why is because that's today's date i know i'm working on a saturday but in any case you see what i mean i'm working on a day that's not typical for somebody to work on a weekend but like I said, we can customize that. I just want to keep it simple here and go over the views really quickly. And so that's why you'll see it shaded for the defaults and also the times for the week. So the shaded Sunday and Saturdays and then anything before 8 a.m. Let me scroll up. Is shaded and then anything after 5 p.m. And then finally, we've got the month view. Select like that. It's highlighted over here, the 26th, Saturday, when I click off somewhere else. Well, it opens it up and allows me to go ahead and type in an appointment. But you can still see it over here, albeit faded, the 26th, in a soft blue, letting me know that that's today's date. And then if I'm not going to schedule anything here, which we'll learn how to do later on, not in this video, click on the X to get out of it. And then it just shows you the date that you currently have selected. That's not today's date. And you can verify that either over in the main view, with the faded blue if it's on a weekend and not a typical work week. Or you can verify it over here in the navigation pane of the entire month that's selected in the lighter shade of blue. The darker shade is today's date. And then within the month, you can navigate around here. Use the arrows to go from the current month, March, to April. And you can even use the down arrow over to the right 
with the scroll bar moving and advancing along as I go down or go ahead and click and drag that and it'll update it week by week. May 22nd, 2016, when I let go, takes me right to the beginning of the month starting with that date, May 22nd, 2016. And as I mentioned earlier, you can come up here on the Home tab, the Go To group to go to today's date. It takes us there. The other option is the next seven days. So it starts with the day that you're currently on and finds the next seven days, opens it up in the week view, even though it's showing that day's highlighted because we can see today's date, Saturday, and then the next six days. You can also get a little bit more particular if you want to expand the Go To group by clicking on its expandable dialog box button. Opens it up. Go ahead and click on the drop down arrow, advance however you'd like, or come in here and delete it and type in a date. And then you can choose either to view it as the day calendar, week, month, click okie dokie, jumps right to it in the month view. Oh, hey, one last thing that I want to cover that I think you'll find pretty fun, at least I do. In any case, I get off these little tweaks, and one tweak that you can do to your calendar is changing the default color, like where it says previous or next appointments from the default blue, and also up at the top for the days, you can change it to, well, let's find out. Go ahead and find a blank area anywhere on your calendar, either in the month, week, work week, or day, doesn't matter, just right click, because in the shortcut menu, you get color. There's the automatic, and since I chose December to do this demonstration, let's go ahead and go to something red. Hey, Merry Christmas. And then that way, when you close out of your Outlook program, open it back up, that's going to be your new default color.